Hey everyone, this short video is actually for Mr. Anderson. I feel bad because he asked how the substitution rate actually works, but I didn't have it in the actual long video that I made the other day because I made it before he asked the question. So therefore, I'm going to break it down and how we can easily explain it using the biblical timeline. So these studies show us that most substitutions arise anywhere between around 17 and 40 generations. This means that there is a new substitution that arises within that time frame and then begins to work its way through the population till it reaches fixation. Fixation is based on population size. That said, what makes more sense? Humans living in small tribal populations over hundreds of thousands of years, and before them, Neanderthal living for 400,000 years in small population sizes of no more than 20. Yet, they only have 20 fixed substitutions, and humans only have 18. Or does it make more sense that everything we also see outside of genetics that aligns with the biblical time frame and corroborates these substitution rates makes more sense? This is where we have Adam and Eve being created between 6,000 and 7,500 years ago and living for about 1,600 to 2,600 years till Noah's flood. Clearly, many mutations would be fixed in that time period. After this is what is known as Noah's Global Flood Bottleneck. This occurred around 4,400 to 5,320 years ago, depending on the Greek Septuagint or Masoretic text. So we have three women on the Ark now that are all unrelated and have their own fixed substitution differences. We know them as haplogroups L, M, and M on the mitochondria tree. From these women coming off the ark, we read in the Book of Jubilees, it tells us that Noah's sons went from the ark and built their own cities and named them after their wives. So we already have three small populations of people now living in cities, not far from one another, where their own new substitutions begin to arise in the population, and working their way through the population to fixation. Then we have the entire population coming together to build the Tower of Babel, and God then confuses the languages. Seventy or so new languages are formed, so we can now take that population and divide it into 70 smaller populations, about 400 to 1,100 years after the flood. This is anywhere between 15 and 33 generations after. Exactly when we would expect new substitutions to be arising in the population based on these studies. That means, right after Babel, we have small populations spreading out, with new substitutions becoming fixed in the population groups as they begin to spread out. Do we have any evidence for this? Sure we do. Look at all the new haplogroups that formed in the Middle East, and not in Africa, where humans were supposedly been living for 150,000 years. So, we have three women, each with their own substitution mutation, starting their own population until they converge on the Tower of Babel. Then we have this population breaking apart into 70 smaller factions, making these new substitutions rise to fixation rapidly, creating new haplogroups that we would expect to find near the Tower of Babel, exactly what we see in population genetics. So I hope that explains how substitution rates work based on these studies, which are very vague and say one out of every 30 to 33 generations. It's not in a linear fashion. You don't just count one up every 33 generations until you land on a date. These studies are showing how often new substitutions arise, not when they reach fixation. That's based on population size. Until next time.